now for a few moments can I introduce uh, Maulana Muzammir Hussain Sahib. Please come and have a brief introduction of <coughs> Sayyidu Shuhada, Sayyiduna Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli wa nusallimu ala Rasooli al-Kareem. Amma ba'd. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا تقولوا لمن يقتل في سبيل الله أموات بل أحياء ولكن لا تشعرون صدق الله العظيم إن الله وملائكته يصدون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آلي سيدنا ومولانا محمد المبارك وسلم وسلم عليه <coughs> My respect, respectful teachers, elders and brothers in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh We are gathered here today in this, on this great day to remember the greatest martyrdom in the history of mankind It is the shahadat of Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiyallahu anhu, the noble grandson of our noble prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Now, to understand the martyrdom, martyrdom of Imam Hussain, we must understand the political situation at the time of Imam Hussain. May Allah be pleased with him. Now, Amir Muawiyah, may Allah be pleased with him, before he passed away, he made his son Yazid the next ruler of the Muslim Ummah. And before he passed away, he told his son that your rule of Khilafat will never be accepted by the Muslims until four people swear their oath of allegiance to you. Now those four people were the sons of the greatest and most closest Sahaba to our Holy Prophet wasallam. Now those four people were one, Sayyiduna Imam Hussain bin Ali, may Allah be pleased with him. Number two was <coughs> Sayyiduna Abdul Rahman bin Abi Bakr, the third was Sayyiduna uh, Abdullah bin Umar, and the fourth was Sayyiduna Abdullah bin Zubair. Now, Amin Muawiyah, may Allah be pleased with him, told his son that if any one of these four people do not accept you, then you will never be accepted amongst the Muslims. And it was for this reason that Yazid told the governor of Medina, whose name was Al Wahid bin Utbah, that you must accept, uh, tell Imam Hussain to accept the oath of allegiance on your ha hands on my behalf. Now, when Imam Hussain was told about this, then obvious, Imam Hussain rejected. How could the blood of Ali, the milk of Fatima, and he who climbed on the shoulders of the Holy Prophet وسلم, when he was reading Namaz, how could he swear the oath of, of allegiance to such a person or such an un Islamic ruler or leader. The first to open his drink wine in front of people, that ruler who entertained himself with women, <coughs> who sang in front of him and who danced in front of him. And in order to understand the motto of Imam Hussein, we must also talk about the personal personal character of Yazid. Now, Ibn Jarir al Tabri, who is a famous historian, he tells us about the saying of one of the most loyal servants of Yazid, whose name was Abdullah bin Ziyad ibn Samir. Now this person, he sacrificed his own life, the life of his children, his wealth, and even his own soul, his own faith for Yazid and his family. Now obviously, if such a loyal person says something against Yazid, you can't say he's, you know, he's, uh, he, you know there's any form of prejudice there. Like whatever he says is a lie. Obviously, whatever he says, it must be, you know, to uh, inform, you know, uh, Amir Muawiyah who is he that, you know, change your character. So that Ibn Jarir also narrates that when Amir Muawiyah, may Allah be pleased with him, because of the fear of civil war, when he was close to his death, he decided that Yazid should be his, should be the next ruler of the Muslims. Now he wrote a letter to Abdullah bin Ziyad and he asked him, what do you think? What do you think of my idea that I will appoint Yazid as being the ruler after me? Now, Abdullah bin Ziyad, with one of his friends, he 
one of his girlfriends told him that Yazid is a person who has what? Who has very bad, he has a bad temper. He can lose his anger very quickly. And not only that, he is very irresponsible. And also, he spends his time in the interest of hunting <coughs> and drinking alcohol, and he has many bad habits. And he told his friend that you should go to Amir Muawiyah, may Allah be pleased with him, and tell him that, you know, your son, he has you know, many defects, and you should not appoint your son to be the leader of the Muslims now. Give him time, let him change his habits, and then appoint him afterwards. And the same awakiyah, the same sayings, unrated in the seerah of Ibn Qasir, who says exactly the same words, but he also says that eventually it was decided that the Amids decided not to inform Amir Muawiyah, may Allah be pleased with him, of the defects of Yazid. They decided that it's better that we tell Yazid himself, <coughs> sort out your bad habits. Do not stop drinking, stop hunting, stop doing evil deeds. And this clearly shows that Amin Muawiyah, may Allah be pleased with him, was not aware of the defects of his son. And also that his own deputies, they had come to such a state that his own deputies were afraid of informing or telling Amin Muawiyah about the condition of his son. So for this reason, we understand that Imam Hussein refused to swear his oath of allegiance to such a person who had bad character. And we also understand that after the passing away of Yazid, there came the ruler Umar bin Abdul Aziz, who was from the same family of Yazid, and who is considered to be the fifth rightly guided caliph. And he's also the first <coughs> ruler of the Muslims to order the preserving of the Sunnah or the Hadith of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this person is from the family of Yazid. Now in his presence one day, Suwan said Yazid and called him with the title of what? Amirul Mu'min, <coughs> leader of Muslims. When he heard this, he became so angry and furious that he said to him, how dare you call such a wicked person the title of Amirul Mu'min? And he ordered that person to 20 lashes. He said, you have to be punished with 20 lashes. And from this day onwards, anyone who calls Yazid Amir al-Mu'mineen will get the same punishment. Now, this is his own relative. The person from Banu Umayyah, the family of Yazid, he has this opinion that Yazid is a wicked man. We also understand that after the martyrdom of Imam Hussein, uh, Abdullah bin Hanzala, who was a son of a great Sahabi, his father was martyred in the Battle of Uhud. And his body, his body was washed by the angels. Being son of such a great Sahabi, he himself was also a great person. He was given the title of ar meaning being a very strong worshipper of Almighty Allah. Now this person, when he went to the uh, company of Yazid, and he, he stayed with him a few days, and he saw his bad character, that he was drinking alcohol, he was so intoxicated, sometimes due to his intoxication, he would miss his prayers. And when he saw that he was a bad person and that the people that were surrounding him were bad people, he came back to Medina and told the people of Medina that we have taken our oath of allegiance to Yazid. We are not loyal to such a wicked man. And, he, and due to this great person saying this, it was the people of Medina who broke their allegiance to Yazid. Why? Because he was an un Islamic leader. And the people of Medina when they did this, they knew that Yazid, his response would be what? Would be the same response that he gave to Imam Hussein. They were not afraid. They said that if we are being ruled by an Islamic leader, <coughs> obviously the Muslim Ummah will suffer. And it was for this reason, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Hanzala and the people of Medina, they rebelled and Yazid sent his army against the people of Medina. And it was for this reason, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Hanzala was martyred, his seven sons were martyred, why? Because they rebelled against <coughs> an arrogant and un-Islamic leader. Now, there's another hadith which the Prophet said, anyone who harms or fights against the people of Medina, what is he destined for? He is destined for ruin and chaos. He will go to hell forever. Now, Yazid attacked the people of Medina, the, the noble people of Medina. Why? Because they rebelled against him due to his own Islamic <coughs> habits. Now, the lesson that we learn from Imam Hussein is that Whenever there comes a ruler who does not respect the Qur'an, who does not respect the Sunnah, who does not respect freedom, who does not ex uh, respect equality, then we must raise the flag of mutiny. Now, Alamah Iqbal writes in his poem, talking about Imam Hussein, he says, 
when the caliphate broke its relationship with the Quran and dissolved poison in the goblet of freedom and liberty. The honor of the best of nations was lifted like the much needed cloud of rain. This cloud reigned above the land of Karbala and then left it cultivated. The tulip and the desolated land and then left. By giving your head, you struck at the root of oppression and despotism till the end of time, and the surge of your pure blood originated the flower bed. By sacrificing himself and his entire family, Sayyidina Imam Hussein taught the Islamic nation the following lesson. Other than Almighty Allah, a Muslim is a slave to no one. His head cannot bow down in front of any pharaoh. Now this is a remarkable saying and it clearly shows the condition of Imam Hussein that when he rebelled, he rebelled, why? Not for the uh, desire of government or for the desire of power. Because when he left uh, Makkah, he only had his family with him. He knew that when he would go to Kufa, he would be, you know, uh, he would be, you know, uh, stopped by the army of Yazid. But he did not. He left behind in Makkah forty thousand of his followers, and he only left with his family, clearly showing that when he left, he only left with the intention to strike at the evil rule of Yazid, to strike, to strike at oppression. Now, when Imam Hussein was martyred. The Muslim Ummah had woken up. They could say, if, a noble, if the noble grandson of the Prophet would be martyred, because the hadith, there are numerous hadiths which talk about the greatness of Imam Hussein. And the Prophet ﷺ said that, Oh Allah, I love these two. The Prophet ﷺ is saying, is saying, What? I love Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein. So, Oh Allah, you also love them. In another hadith, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Imam Hassan and Hussein are what? They are the leaders of the youth of paradise. Now, even though the soldiers of Yazid knew this, and they knew that by killing the noble grandson of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that they would be guaranteed hellfire. Now, this clearly shows the condition of Yazid and his army. Now, the great sacrifice of Imam Hussein saved Islam and it is this sacrifice of Imam Hussein that fell, that basically caused the downfall of the family of Yazid or Banu Amiya. And that is why in the year 120 Hijri, Banu Amiya was the family of, or the dynasty of Banu Amiya fell and it was replaced by the dynasty of uh, the Abbasids. Now may Almighty Allah uh, allow us to understand the greatness of Imam Hussein and the sacrifices that he gave for the welfare of Islam. Omar Ali Jaya. Thank you.